It's so wet today. It's blowing a gale. Absolutely tipping it down. And I've had a long list of little tasks I needed to get on with today. And I've been very productive in that respect because I've done them. But I feel really lazy. I feel like I've not done very much. And I think it's just because I can't get outside. I can't even open the windows today. It's so cold compared to how it has been the last few days. So I've been sorting out some new YouTube videos. I uploaded, uh, I edited and uploaded three videos this morning. Recorded a few extra bits. Uh, I've planned a few more videos I want to do. I've listed some stuff on eBay. Um, I've, uh, I've had a few things to sell actually. Three were things that my dad gave me while I was back home. As he's just going around the house or whatever, he finds things that he wants to get rid of. And he gives them to me to sell because they're mostly vintage, you know, like they're vintage tools and interesting, like vintage cameras, things like that. So back in 2020, we had a big clear out of all my granddad's carpentry tools, which my dad's never been a carpenter, but he's kept all the tools. And after 27 years, he's decided things needed to be rehomed. So I've been slowly selling that for him over the last few years, and we've done really well with that. And every so often, he'll pull out a few gems, and he found some really interesting things, actually. One was a 30-metre rule. Uh, like a tape measure that he used to use at work. And my dad used to work for London Electricity, the London Electricity Board as it was back in the 70s. And he used to use this for work. Um, there's also a, uh, I think it's called a Cosmic 35, a Russian film camera that belonged to my granddad, uh, which we presume to be working. The shutter mechanism seems to work, so we assume it's okay. I've listed that on Etsy. There was also a Viceroy light meter for taking photographs. We listed that as well. And then my friend who I meet when I go home has uh, got very good at uh, offloading stuff onto me as well. She's worked out I'm a good repository for stuff. So she gave me two enormous sacks of unwanted clothes at the beginning of the year. I've made about 100 quid out of that. She had no interest in the money. She just wanted it out of the house. Uh, she's one of these people that isn't interested in selling second-hand stuff. She just wants stuff gone. So I've done right at that. I've still got about a third of the stuff left, but a lot of it is summer stuff. And I think it might sell better later on. Also, I've noted with Vinted, the stuff that sells is plus size. I've noticed that anything that I sell that's in an 18 or a 20 or over that sells really well. Um, and maybe it's just a better place for girls who are looking for plus size stuff that maybe well they're just not finding the stuff they want in the shops maybe some girls are self-conscious about buying in the shops when they are plus size in that 18 20 22 range it might just be that it's easier and you get a better range on vintage but um the the, the plus size stuff really does sell well and i'm happy to sell it i'm only putting things up for like two or three quid um, I never bought the stuff so anything I make is a profit and I don't have to pay the postage so whatever price I list it for is the price I get so she gave me a pair of jeans this time which are only a 16 so I don't know they're going to sell very well um, I also listed a 16 to 18 bolero cardigan yesterday afternoon and uh, my friend gifted me um, something that she was given so she does, she used to do the cleaning work through the same agency that I did, but then she started to go private and she, she doesn't do cleaning, she does, she'll go in as a, almost like a companion. So she will go in and um, look after people, um, cook for them, uh, batch cook for them so that they can just put things in the microwave or the oven, all that sort of stuff. 
and one of her ladies um, had a, a ceramic electric kettle that looks like a teapot and and she'd responded oh that's nice that you have that and the lady took it upon herself to buy her one because she thought she liked it so she's given me this I think she's had it for years I think she put it in a cupboard she didn't need it she didn't want it um, it's not got its box but it is brand new unused so I've tested it and it works fine and I've listed that on eBay um, there seem to be an awful lot of them on eBay and I just want it gone so I've listed it at the minimum auction price uh, I'm not giving it free postage so I've just listed it at the minimum price and whacked on um, the money for a every uh, delivery it's going to need a lot of packaging because it's ceramic I don't want it getting broken in the post which there's always a chance so I need to really pack it out so we'll see if we can offload that and that'll be a few more quid in the bank uh, so I've done loads of little little jobs lots of little things but I just don't feel like I've been that productive and I think it's because it's cold again and I'm not happy about that and I can't go outside because it's just awful out there Ugh. but I have to go and do my Tuesday evening clean so I will get out eventually and do stuff and then tomorrow is my Wednesday clean there's a little bit of excitement <laughs> earlier this morning I've recorded a section on it which I will include um, apologies for all the emojis on it I didn't want to include the details of the company um, it's not the company's fault I don't think so I've just tried to I've tried to find a way of being able to just blur out sections of a video but I can't seem to do it with the free version of PowerDirector so that's why I use the the shush emoji just to cover up um, addresses and numbers of companies uh, location stuff that might be a bit iffy anything that I don't want to share you just have to keep there, there, there's a there's a lot of shush emojis on this next section coming out you just have to put up with it um, it's vaguely amusing I don't normally record other people but um, I thought this was kind of funny in its own way and I've never posted anything like this before so I thought it'd be something a bit different anyway so I'll add that um, and that's all we have for now yeah I'm just <laughs> I'm so frustrated because what I really want to do is just snack now because I've done all my little jobs I can't go outside because it's miserable out there and I'm trying not to snack because I said I wouldn't I'm doing my making lunch laughs last from lunchtime until tea time and that works but I I'm just missing the variety of junk food crisps bit of chocolate cake I haven't made anything since I got back it will happen because I have things oh the other thing I need to do is um, I need to do a food inventory every six months or so I will do a recheck of the numbers in my cupboard because stuff gets forgotten you know I'll get the wrong number on a spreadsheet so every so often like every six months I will go through and just readjust the numbers if I've got something wrong if there's if I've forgotten to knock a, a jar of coffee off the list or something and get the money right. So I'm going to do, I'll probably do a quick um, little overview of that on the end of this video as well. Just to, it's just another thing I'm doing this week. I um, hope you're having a good week. I hope it's brighter and jollier where you are. <laughs> Please spring, come back again. It was doing so well. I miss you so much. Oh my goodness, come on, let's get rid of all this rain now. <laughs> don't know if you can hear the noise. <laughs> there's always something going on here. So, there's a house over the back that's having some work done. I think they're gutting the whole house. It's a rental property. And they've had a skip there for a few weeks now. And a skip company guy has come back to take the skip away. And there's been a bit of a row. And the skip man is screaming and shouting at the man inside the building, who I think is the owner. And the bloke in the house 
has been recording him on his mobile and now he's on the phone. And I think one of the problems... Oh dear. Oh, this is getting nasty. The, um... Oh my god. <laughs> the people in the house have overfilled the skip, basically. So the guy has been chucking stuff off the top of the skip. <laughs> because it's way overflowed. And when he drives away with it, it's all going to fall off on the road. The guy's an idiot. So the skip man's been emptying off the top. And now the guy is trying to upload the skip onto the lorry. And the man in the house is throwing... got to show you this. I know he's hiding in the doorway, recording him. It's the guy in the house that's in the wrong. Because you can't overfill the skips. Because all that is now going to end up falling off the skip as he drives down the road. So he's going to have to take some of that rubbish off the top of that skip, I would think. I don't think he's going to. I think he's just going to drive off with it as it is. But there's now a ton of rubbish. Look at all that rubbish that's been left outside the back of the house. He's going to... He's just going to lob rubbish at him. He's going to get run over. He's not letting it go, is he? I mean, the guy in the house is annoyed because he's 
he booked the smallest skip he possibly could because he doesn't want to spend the money. He's had too much stuff, he's overloaded the skip. The skip man can't take all that. So he's emptied bits out. And the guy in the house is really cheesed off and now he's going to have a go at the guy's company for not taking all his rubbish. And the chances are he won't pay for another skip because people are tight and all that rubbish is now just going to sit there forever. There goes a skip man, really cheesed off, he's had a naff day. And there you can see, there's no way on earth that is going to make it to wherever he's taking it. You've got no chance. Guys, just look at the state of this place. Because it's all falling off the back. <laughs> the stuff that goes on around here. I wonder if these guys are going to tidy up. Oh my god. Looks like a fly tip site. The residents are going to get really cheesed. It just looks really gross. Anyway, so that's, uh, <laughs> oh my God, you have to pity people. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The rules are don't overfill your skip. Don't be tight with your skip payments. Get a bigger skip. If you need another skip, get one. He's not going to, is he? I mean, you know what's going to happen now. He's just going to sit there for weeks and weeks and weeks. There's another neighbour who's come out and he's having a look about. Wednesday morning, it rained all day yesterday, and now it's raining all day today, and it's cold. Look, I'm back in my winter coat. Oh, <laughs> it's not fair. So yeah, I'm off to do my Wednesday, my first Wednesday clean back after the holidays. Oh, coming back to routine. <laughs> Didn't, have not been enjoying that. Anyway. At least my routine isn't as bad as other people's. So I have to go back to the medical unit on Friday and have my blood tests redone. So I got a call yesterday afternoon from the doctor who's overseeing this trial and he was in charge of the last one I was on and asked if I had been unwell if I'd had a cold or anything, so because some of my results were elevated. And I think what that means is that my white blood count is up. I think that's how it works. When you get ill, your white blood cell count goes up because your body is fighting a virus. And I haven't been ill. The interesting thing is that when I did the screening for the trial that I did last August, exactly the same thing happened. I got a call after my blood test results and they asked if I'd been ill because I had raised uh, like an elevated count. So I said to him, I said this is interesting because this happened the last time and I said maybe that's just the way my blood is and he said well it might be, he said, but come back in and we'll redo your test because we need to make sure that you're okay that there's nothing you know you're not ill you're not carrying any viruses and things because it really messes up their results and it could make me ill so at least they're being careful about it i potentially have a theory about this now i've never done any 
blood screenings like this before. So it may be that my blood has always been like this. Maybe I have always had a slightly elevated count. I'm very rarely ill. I cannot remember the last time I had a cold, although I don't mix with a lot of people because I live on my own and I work from home. But on the occasions when I do get exposed to people, like when I go and see my parents, my brother's kids are there, they're young, um, they come up from school and they're always carrying a cold or something. My dad thought he had a cold, was going down with a cold when I was down there, although he seemed to perk up very quickly, so maybe he wasn't. Um, but I very, very rarely get ill. And maybe I'm just a force of nature. <laughs> But my, my theory on this is that back in 2020, I am pretty sure that I got COVID. I was asymptomatic, so I wasn't ill. I didn't have any of the usual symptoms that people have. I didn't have, um, uh, you know, a cold. I wasn't flu symptoms. I wasn't tired. I wasn't ill. Had no idea. But I started to get all these weird rashes on my feet and my lower legs. And I had several different rashes and I got hives on my feet that were like mosquito bites. Oh my God. I almost ripped myself to pieces. And it wasn't until I got what was recognized as COVID toes, and if you don't know what that is, Google it, that I realized I'm, that what I was getting may have been because I had, I'd had COVID. And I think I started to notice it in October 2020. So we're kind of height of COVID and before any of the vaccines were being handed out. But those rashes I had lasted a year and a half. They didn't last a short amount of time as they said they would. The COVID toes went pretty quickly. But the rashes continued in one form or another for a year and a half. And I wonder if I had an over immune response. Go on. And that, because I've, I've heard of people having an over immune response, so uh, the virus has long since gone, but the immune system thinks it's still fighting the good fight, so to speak. And I was reading up on something yesterday after this call with the doctor, and I've, I was reading that having COVID can permanently change your haematology so your blood so I'm going to ask him about this when I go in on Friday for my retests because I'm rather intrigued by it and it's only because I had the symptoms the side effects for such a long time that made me think maybe I've had an over response and during the time that I was still getting this over response I had two vaccines. So I had my first vaccine in April 2021. I think I had another one in the summer. And I can't remember if I had a booster or not. I don't remember how many I've had now. I've got the paperwork somewhere. So if my body was still thinking it was fighting the virus and didn't have it, and then I've gone and got a couple of vaccines as well. That may have prolonged that immune response to what was then a year and a half. I don't have a particularly political stance on the COVID vaccines. I know that people get very ranty about it. Um, I'm not really that inclined that way inclined I haven't had anything since those rashes and things all stopped 
but I am intrigued by whether I just have elevated levels now because things have just permanently changed. Maybe I have superhuman immune system DNA now or something. <laughs> but all my problems started way before vaccines. So don't start saying, oh, you shouldn't have got the vaccine to mess up your immune system. This happened like minimum six months before I got any vaccines. So I think I probably had COVID, as most of us probably did, and a lot of us didn't even realise. As I say, I wasn't sick, but I had these very long, annoying, ongoing rashes that started very small and progressed and got worse and worse and worse and worse and then took a long time to die down and then I would get little intermittent outbreaks so I'm going to ask them about that when I go in on Friday for my retest because that might have something to do with it I mean the problem is that because I've never had a blood screening before for a medical trial I don't know if my blood has been like that for a long time or forever or that I've had another viral thing like a cold or something in the past a long time ago and I've had elevated levels for a long time and maybe if I have maybe that's why I had an overreaction to Covid if I already had ele elevated levels. So that's my little update on that. It doesn't mean I am off the running for this trial because this happened to me last time and they, they took me, they were fine. But I think because as well, this particular trial is connected to things to do with lung function. I think they want to be sure that I don't have a cold or something um, which might make me worse or whatever else it might be. So that's all interesting. I don't quite glow in the dark yet. <laughs> but I'm always interested in how like our bodies react to different things. And so I'm rather intrigued to find out what the possible hypothesis for this may be. I mean, when I go into Google and I search for information about this, I tend to look for clinical papers because looking for anything else could get you into all sorts of problems. Good grief, there is nowhere to park. Wow, okay, uh, I'm gonna have to go down the road. Gosh, it is very, oh, that's the space I was gonna have. You're not gonna get in there, are you? I'm gonna have to try and find somewhere else to park. This is really busy here today. Wow, well, okay. Uh, can I take that one? Should I go up here? Let me go up here. Let's go up here. We can park up here. There we go. There we go. Right. Arrived. <laughs> Cold. I've still got the, the heater on the car and I'm early so I'm just going to sit here like an idiot for five minutes and uh, just do my thing. Dreading going back to this bit of the routine. The, um, the cleans of the business aren't too bad because I can stick a, a, uh, stick a podcast on and there aren't any people there but there are two people here and I have to make things like conversation <laughs> and be entertaining and be interested in their conversations it goes quick enough. Most of the time I'm on my own upstairs doing the cleaning work and sometimes I sneak a podcast on. 
because it just uh, keeps things a little bit more interesting. Look at this rain. Look at this rain.